Joining me now is FAA licensed commercial pilot Anthony Roman and aviation journalist Seth Kaplan. And Anthony, let me start with you because uh, you have something of a bombshell that I hadn't heard yet uh, with respect to the, the certification process and, and what Boeing was allowed to do or yeah. has been allowed to do. Charles, I have never heard of it myself and I've been flying for more than 30 years. In 2005, the FAA allowed Boeing and several other aircraft manufacturers to self-certify their aircraft, to select their staff that would participate in the self-certification process. Now, how that exactly works is unclear. Does the FAA just rubber stamp what they do, or do they actually review the data during the self-certification process? Remarkable. Now, this has been a boon uh, for Boeing because uh, apparently they saved up to $25 billion over that 10-year period. Yeah, it, it's an economic impact that helped the bottom line at Boeing, no question about it. The question is, should a profit-making organization with lives in its hands be permitted to self-certify their aircraft? Seth, uh, as, a, as an airline journalist, uh, is this unusual? Have you heard about this before? Because uh, a lot of things are being revealed right now about this process and the plane that the public didn't know about before. All kinds of things. Sounds almost like controversies you'll hear about in the building industry with uh, you know, contractors being allowed to sort of self-certify what they do rather than building inspectors, right? Here, though, as much risk as you can imagine in any industry, and look, for, for as long as things have worked, and yeah, broadly speaking, this industry is as safe as it's ever been, uh, didn't seem to matter, did it? But here we are with these two disasters in less than five months involving one aircraft type that you know, makes up a very small percentage of the global fleet, Obviously, reasonable to ask questions about all of those things. It's a small percentage of the global fleet, but it's a huge percentage of Boeing's profit making uh, right now and for, and for the foreseeable future. One of the reasons this has been one of those stocks that I've urged people to own and never sell is because they had such a clear runway, no pun intended, for making money for the next 10, 15, even 20 years. They've got a massive order book. They've, they've really outshined the competition. So it's really important that we do get to the bo bottom of this. Your, think, your thoughts, Seth, on the FAA yeah. and how they've handled this so far. Yeah, and you're right. This is a high margin uh, aircraft because Boeing was able to just, you know, kind of update the old 737. In a lot of regards, uh, this was kind of an incremental change, you know, and that's part of how they marketed it. They said, look, it's innovative in all the right ways, burns less fuel, uh, can fly farther. But on the other hand, you could just drop it into your fleet. As we see, they perhaps over innovated in one very important way, that anti-stall system. But yeah, uh, the FAA now uh, is under the microscope, as is Boeing, uh, in terms of lots of things, not only what Anthony was talking about, but also, uh, you know, the idea that a change that we all now see was very important was allowed to be considered as something that maybe pilots uh, didn't need to know about, at least didn't need to be highlighted, you know, it was somewhere right. in, the, in the manual right. there, but it, it changed how they fly the plane. Yeah, and, and of course, Anthony, uh, you know, the, the reports that maybe Boeing thought it would be too expensive or maybe it just it was too much information for the pilots to grasp. Uh, and, and it was it was somewhere in the manual, but not additional training. Uh, all of those things playing a big role in this. And ultimately, the question is going to be, will the American public, when and will they have the confidence to get back on these planes? We just heard from Jeff Block, just at O'Hare alone, 2,300 delays, 1,400 cancellations. Well, really, these aircraft are not the aircraft of the 1990s and early 2000s. That was the period when all of this automation started. It really started flourishing. The current aircraft being manufactured are so incredibly complex compared to those models. We're talking hundreds of thousands of lines to millions of lines of computer code and super automation in these aircraft. Probably the next step will be pilot as aircraft. But really, what we have to look at is what worked for the last 50 years may not work for the next 20 years. And with respect to what, uh, the way we inspect them, the way, and because I think of a Chevy mechanic in 1980 trying to work on a Chevy today, right? It's exactly. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. You open point. the hood, you don't even recognize the engine. That's right. And you need different diagnostics, different knowledge. You need to understand computer code. It can take several hundred thousand hours to shake out computer code in flight. They can rear their ugly head, small little problems or larger problems yeah. somewhere down the road. Seth, uh, same, same question to you. You know, I, I, I was, so I'm going back, I'm reading articles about this, and you talk about how much further it could fly. 
uh, how it sort of just was the same, you know, just a retrofit. Uh, you know, I read where the lavatories were 75 percent smaller, right, or, or 20, you know, 75 percent of what they were before, how flight attendants bumped their heads, they had injuries. I mean, they did a lot to make this plane the magnificent plane that it is. They did, yeah. Some of what uh, might be considered innovations economically, not necessarily that uh, uh, things that please passengers. Uh, it, you know, yeah, it, and, and when you're inside one, it, it's not a radical departure, at least, you know, not compared to the, the last of the, the previous generation of, of 737s. But airlines were looking for all of it, and Boeing was under pressure. Charles, by the way, this was an airplane that Boeing didn't really want to build. Uh, Boeing felt forced to build this defensively. The comp- Competition was updating uh, their products. Boeing would have preferred to wait another five or ten years, build sort of a clean sheet aircraft really designed from scratch. Instead, they did what Airbus had done, hung new engines basically on the old airplane. uh, And airlines lapped it up. Five thousand of them uh, ordered. Now Boeing under pressure to show that uh, those planes will be able to fly safely. Seth, Anthony, thank you both very, very much. Great insight. We appreciate it. Thank you.